Hello, and thank you for your company today. Today, I'm joined by Danny O'Dame. Welcome to the podcast, Danny. Hi, everyone. And hello, Jennifer. Thank you so much for having me here today. This is going to be an amazing conversation. Thank you for coming. What I would like to start with is actually your title, Sugar Freedom Expert. I love it. What does it yeah. mean? <laughs> what the heck is that? I know. Full disclosure, I totally made it up. Um, but it's it's really a, an a, um, accumulation of the seven years of work that I've done over the last year and almost decade of helping women really uncover their root causes of binging and craving sugar. And this is where the term sugar freedom comes in, right? Is uh, helping my clients cultivate this sense of freedom when it comes to food and sugar so that they're back in the driver's seat and in control and sugar is no longer you know, driving them crazy and ruling their every day and every life. So my, my focus and passion is, as a sugar freedom expert is helping women find sugar freedom. And that is different for every woman. It is very different for every human being in what that looks like and what that means and doing the deep inner healing that is mandatory in order to create that peace with food, that relationship that we're all craving with healthy food, right? When it's, it's easy to eat healthy and we're not just you know, ending up at the drive through or binging on ice cream every night. And really, again, just that, that sense of being back in the driver's seat. And the second part actually of, uh, this is a new title that I have, and you were, you know, um, just mentioning my title there is actually somatic embodiment coach. So one of the things that I've deeply discovered, and we'll maybe get into that in this episode is understanding that a lot of why we numb out and escape with food. And we'll talk about what that actually means is because we're disconnected from our bodies. It's because we no longer trust our bodies. We no longer know how to feel or even know what our body is telling us that it needs in any given moment. So somatic is for those who aren't familiar with that term, it just means of the body. And as a somatic embodiment coach, one of the things that I'm building more into my practice this year, as I've been learning and diving into the world of somatics and therapy, body centered therapy is this understanding that we need to get back into our bodies if we actually want to repattern the old wires, the old pathways, our nervous system, that is ultimately at the root of why we're binging on sugar. I know that's kind of a lot. I just want to give like the 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 quick notes here at the beginning as to a, a couple of the the areas that I really focus on and am passionate about. It's it's such a different way to look at healing, and I like I what I really love about seeking help in 2023 is there are so many options. You get to choose your own adventure if if you want. Pharmaceuticals, you've got it. If you want to actually get some deep underlying healing to the root cause, you can also do the deep work and figure out why you're doing the things that you're doing. But Danny, how did you get involved in this work? How, why are you the, the sugar freedom expert? <laughs> Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. That's a, that's a long story that I will try to make short. Um, my journey has been my whole life. When I look back, you know, I have been addicted to sugar and binging on sugar ever since I was a kid, it was used for happiness and love and joy and comfort and just everything. Uh, as I think most of us have, can relate to, you know, living in the world that we live in. So this was just my life growing up, just overdosing on sugar without really knowing it, without really knowing that it was harming me. My parents didn't know, nobody knew. We're learning it now, right? How, how toxic and, and harmful this is, especially those of you who are transitioning right into menopause and perimenopause, you know, the effects that, that hopefully by now, you know, uh, that processed food and sugar and seed oils and alcohol, right. Are having on your hormones, um, so for me, it really started unfolding and I started um, really getting clear that I had a problem with sugar actually after university. And I went to working actually in the financial industry. I worked in a, in a bank here in Canada for about two years, and it was probably the most miserable that I've ever been in my whole life. I was extremely depressed. I was really anxious. I was stressed every day. I hated my job. I was not supported in the environment that I was in. I was really, now I can look back and use the terminology. I was extremely misaligned with my purpose and with what I was actually doing. And 
at the time I didn't know it, but that was really the rock bottom for my emotional eating, my binge eating, my numbing out, um, on alcohol, on food, on Netflix. Like I was pulling in all the things that I could just escape the misery that I was feeling inside. And that really led me on, on, you know, a path of, of getting curious about what was going on. My husband and I actually both quit our jobs. We went and traveled South America for a year. That was kind of our turn turning point. And when we came home, we just started having such a new understanding of food, of how we were nourishing our bodies or not nourishing our bodies. And that was really the start of making my personal changes of trying to get back in the driver's seat of my health and my future, because my genetic predispositions are not good people. It's not good on both sides of my family, not good. And I decided I don't want to be like that, right? I want to be hiking and living my best life when I'm 90. And I had to do something about that. So I started really diving into my own sugar addiction and starting to even use that terminology like, hey, I have a problem with sugar, right? I'm binging on sugar. I can't stop. I need a snack. Like all the, that impulse, that addictive need and dependency, um, I had to you know, make peace with that and come to terms with that and, and begin trying to get a hold of that myself, which is where over about two or three years, I finally started developing... And what I now teach my clients is the, the the pillars around actually creating a healthy relationship with sugar by creating a healthy relationship with yourself. And that's been about seven years ago now that I've been on that path and continuing every year to understand different depths and different layers to why we eat what we eat. And um, I think it's really important here. One of the things you, you kind of touched on this, but I, I want to bring this in and then I'll pass it back to you is is um, this understanding that if we want, if we want to fix something in our life, you know, there's a problem that we maybe have, maybe it's, you know, hot flashes, maybe it's binge eating patterns with sugar, like you can't stop, you need the sweet stuff. You can't fix a problem in your life until you first understand why it exists. So it will exist. Why is there an addiction? Why is there a hot flash showing up? Like, why are you having trouble sleeping? Right? We can't get to a real lasting solution with any problem in our life until we first understand why the problem exists. And this is where most people go wrong, especially with sugar. And maybe in what you see as well, Jennifer, is just trying to cope with the, the you know, these outward issues, right? Taking sleeping pills or trying to just change their habits, detoxing from sugar. This is the big pitfall that I know a lot of my clients make, which just think all my problems will go away if I just willpower myself off sugar. And that doesn't actually ever create a lasting solution because we haven't gotten to the root, the root cause, right? We haven't gotten into the foundation that needs fixing. So that's, that's where I'm passionate about. And I spend all my time. That's a really good point. Like you just look at New Year's resolutions. Real power will get you through the first day, maybe the first week, yeah. but not through the entire year. So so what are some of the underlying emotions that you see are connected with blood, well, blood, uh, sugar addiction, sorry. Yeah, which leads to blood sugar dysregulation. Yeah. Right? Um, yeah. So again, this is such a topic that I can, I can talk for hours and hours on. So I'll try to just keep it real short for you. And of course, anyone who wants to learn more can come and listen to more on my podcast, but what I've really seen and have really noticed not only my own journey, but in the studying around addiction that I've done and, um, and the seven years of experience and working with hundreds of women and helping them reclaim control is actually a deep understanding that for most of us, our addictive patterns, whether that's with Instagram or alcohol or sugar, stem from trauma. So, and what I mean by that is that our early childhood experiences have actually shaped the way we see ourselves. They've shaped our nervous system and our ability to regulate our nervous system and feel safe in our body. And everything that exists in our mind has stemmed from a lot of early childhood experiences, our belief systems, our values, the way we act and behave, our people pleasing tendencies, like all of these patterns that we're running as adults have stemmed from some sort of experience that caused us to form these coping mechanisms. Now I say that because one of the biggest things that I see in this world is the emotional piece. So when we, you know, there's trauma at the root and we could have a whole nother podcast about that. On top of that is what's happened in our bodies and in our nervous systems is that we don't actually know how to feel. 
we don't actually know, number one, that it's safe to feel emotions, nor are we ever supported in how to actually process emotions so they don't get stuck in our bodies. For those who aren't familiar, emotions are actually just energy in motion. And what that means is if we don't actually move that energy, it gets stuck in our body. And science is now actually, you can, you can go and do your own research on this. It's out there as proving that when we hold on to our emotions, we stuff them down, we bottle them up, we suck it up, we move on with the day. The more we do that throughout our lives, it actually creates stagnation and toxicity in our cells and begins to actually change the molecular structure of our cells leading to disease. So there is a very real strong case around this emotional component that most people completely ignore when they think of their health, right? We think of sleep and hydration and exercise and eating whole real foods, but this emotional health piece is something that has been completely neglected in our society. I know we live in different countries, but we definitely have been raised in a very similar society where we're just not supported in feeling, especially as women, right? We're taught that, you know, showing emotions is weak, or it means that you're not, you know, that you're worthless, right? Or like we have so much complicated pieces here around feeling. So to come back to your question about, you know, the, the feelings piece there, right? The emotions is really understanding that for most of us, why we're reaching for food is because we don't have a reference in our nervous systems, in our body for how to handle heavy stuff. So when there's grief, when there's sadness, when there's loneliness, when there's stress, these are really intense emotions. And we have no reference in our physical body and in our nervous system for how to actually, number one, feel those emotions. And number two, how to actually release them. So what we've been taught instead is just to make them go away as quick as possible. So we'll do that by stuffing it down, whether that's with food or distraction on Netflix or taking three quick, quick breaths and stop crying and get on with your day. All of the stuffing down is where these patterns are coming from when it comes to addiction is avoidance of this inner pain of avoidance of feeling those really difficult feels and mm -hmm. wanting to escape out of them as quick as possible. That's, that's the pattern that most of us are running. And that's why this emotional component is absolutely at the root of, you know, those, those binging patterns with food. I can so see how the environment is involved in that. Like if I think about growing up, like if you're, you, you fall over in the park and you hurt your knee, it's like, come on, stop crying. I'll go and get you an ice cream. So yes. you're, you've been learned, you've been taught to actually self-soothe or self-regulate with not the best items. So sugars, lollies, yeah. um, whatever yeah. it was that your parents used to offer you to to stop you from from crying or to get get over your issue so we're not actually yeah. born sugar addicts we, we we learn it's a learned pattern we learn well that's a debate as okay. well I mean there are lots of um you know when we think about the physical addiction aspects which are very real it's not all mental emotional I think 80% of it is 20% is physical we can definitely have a propensity towards craving more sugar if our mom was, right? If our parents were, um, you know, especially in vitro, right? If your mom's just binging on sugar while you're, while you're in her womb and, and that's the nutrients that you're getting, you're going to come out of the womb really wanting that. And breast milk is very high in natural sugars. And that is definitely where we start making that connection with sweetness, meaning love, meaning comfort, meaning, you know, connection for, for a lot of us. I mean, it definitely starts there and then it absolutely gets amplified as we learn those behaviors. I mean, you watch any movie, look at any advertisement, it's all telling you when you have an emotion, eat sugar, right? Whether it's happiness, joy, celebration, right? Or the heavy stuff, right? We're watching the movie where the girl gets broken up with from her boyfriend and she's drinking wine and eating ice cream with her girlfriends, right? Like it's everywhere. We're bombarded with that message that in order to cope you eat. And we've never been given the tools to actually handle those emotions to number one, know that they're okay to feel and that they're actually important to feel and to actually move them from our body in a natural way, right? Moving that energy, which is where the somatic stuff comes in, where we get to actually get into some 
uh, vocalization and movement and breath. Like these are some of the most powerful ways that we can actually get that stuff out of our body instead of ignoring it. And we spend a lifetime just ignore, ignoring our emotions and learning that they're not okay to feel. And that, you know, whenever we feel a heavy emotion, we need to go and distract ourselves or get a dopamine hit with that ice cream cone, right? When we've scraped our knee. And this is a pattern that we're still running as adults. So what are some of the signs that, or that women might be, or, or even behavioral patterns that women might be displaying that is possibly a sign that this is some work that you need to do? Um, so what are some of the, the signs of sugar addiction that women may or may not be aware of? Yeah. So if you're a breathing human being, there's work for you to do here. <laughs> I mean, I think I strongly believe all of us have some sort of maybe dysfunctional, unhealthy relationship with food at some level. I still do. I'm still working on it. I am not perfect. I'm still growing. I'm still learning. I'm being aware of where my patterns are showing up and where I still need healing. Um, but below that, you know, is there's definitely a few things to keep an eye out for. Um, so there's a couple of physical symptoms that would show up if you were, you know, having blood sugar dysregulation, which most humans are metabolically dysfunctional. And, um, these would be things like not being able to miss a meal, right? So if you get hangry or really urgent hunger, that's a, a big sign of blood sugar dysregulation. Um, if you, you know, easily get tired, if, wake up feeling really lethargic, if you have trouble sleeping, I mean, all of these things obviously blend in with hormones, right. And with affecting, you know, our body's ability to metabolize and use hormones, um, some other pieces there, more mental, emotional around like sugar addiction or emotional eating would be, um, just not being able to get through a day without a snack, right? Like feeling this constant need to snack, especially after meals. So like that, that need, I need something sweet, you know, that kind of that drive for like, I just need something to finish this off. Um, that's a really big sign. Um, another one is, is mindless eating. So if you often catch yourself, you know, planning to have two cookies and before you know it, you look down and the whole bag is gone and you have no idea where the last 15 minutes just went. Um, so that kind of like blackout eating as well, um, is a, is a really, really big sign. Um, and of course cravings, right? I think a lot of women can relate to, to sort of like, like having that craving for something sweet throughout the day, um, feeling like, oh, I just need to, to hit that that pleasure center, right? Like I need that, that, that craving piece for me. Um, so those are a couple, a couple off the top of my head that really, that really show up a lot for my clients, let alone, I mean, there's lots of physical symptoms and stuff that can, can be a cause of that. Something I want to add to that is for women that hide their eating. So maybe yes. they, they're afraid to, to eat out or to eat with friends or maybe they're having little snacks in the pantry or they're, they're hiding away their little indulgences because on some level they realize mm, maybe this isn't the best thing for me but it's what I really think I need right now um yeah yeah that's a big one thank you for bringing that up I, I absolutely forgot that one and that is a very important one um mm -hmm. that brings in the conversation around shame right? That, which is a huge conversation, something I'm very, very passionate about um, helping women release because we all carry so much shame, especially around our eating habits, right? Or especially around our bodies. And when we feel like we're, we're doing something that we like, know we shouldn't do, right? That bad girl, like I've been a bad girl. I failed at something like that sort of uh, those beliefs that we start taking on when we feel a little out of control, right? Or, or we're not in integrity with ourselves. Another, um, really big sign that's coming up for me, as you mentioned that, right, is also this noticing when you're constantly making promises to yourself and not keeping them. So, oh, tonight I'm not going to have any ice cream, but you have ice cream, right? Or I'm not going to eat any sugar this week, but every day you're eating sugar, right? So are you constantly setting yourself these, like these goals to eat healthy or to, um, you know, to avoid sugar for the day and just not keeping them to yourself, right? Is there that lack of integrity with your word for yourself? Um, that's definitely a big sign that there's, there's some underlying pieces going on there, right? That it's way more than just willpower and 
you know, setting these, setting these goals each day for yourself. So if somebody's listening to this podcast and they're recognizing themselves in the discussion that we're having, what are some of the baby steps that she can take to, to help come out the other end? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So there's, there's lots here because there's, you know, some baby steps here that I'll share around, you know, if you're recognizing that you maybe have an overdosing problem with sugar, right. You're eating more sugar. Um, and then there's the emotional piece, the emotional eating piece, right. And that, that, you know, that inability to, um, regulate without food. So a couple places that you can start on more of the physical aspect there with, with eating too much sugar, um, is number one, starting to track your sugar intake. And this seems really silly as many people think, I don't eat that much sugar or it's not that bad. So any of you who are still listening to this episode, there's something here in what I'm sharing that you feel called to. And I'm willing to bet that you're going to shock yourself if you actually spend a couple of days tracking how much sugar you're eating. And what this is going to do, number one, it's going to help bring serious awareness to, wow, this is how much I'm actually eating versus what I told myself I was eating. And number two, it's going to start training you to label read. So this is such an important ground level tool that we all need. And I know in every country, the label laws are a little bit different. So it's probably different in Australia than here, but just getting acquainted with how to actually read labels and looking at the list of ingredients of what sneaky sugars are being added into your, into your packages. So you can start making better choices. So that's a really, really important place to start there is just that awareness piece starting to maybe keep a journal maybe just spending three days tracking how much sugar you're eating and then on the emotional side tracking your emotional state whenever you eat so this is a another ground level activity and exercise it's free it's simple is just to notice before you put anything in your mouth for the next three days jotting down your emotional state and you might notice that i don't even know what i'm feeling and I just want to highlight that that's totally normal. That is a protective mechanism. Most of us have forgotten what it even feels like to feel in our bodies because it's just not been a safe space our whole lives. So that's okay. But maybe bringing in uh, below that is just an awareness of sensations in your body. So noticing, you know, are you tight in your jaw? Are you holding, you know, some tension in your shoulders? Maybe your back hurts. Like just starting to notice possibly some physical sensations that might come easier than labeling emotions. But if you can, getting into that habit of just noticing when I'm eating, what's going on, and you'll start developing a better sense and awareness of which emotional pieces are really at play for you, right? Is it when I'm stressed that I'm eating? Is it when I'm bored? Uh, for me, it was always boredom over stress, which is surprising because most people, it's stress. Um, so you'll you'll get a, a sense of your unique you know, drive when, when you are emotionally eating and um, those are really the most important places to start is to bring that awareness in. And then obviously there's a lot more that we can do off of that. Um, I will mention, you know, for anyone who wants to take that one next level with the emotional piece would be actually spending moments and time with yourself each day to, to feel what you need to feel. So this is most uh, helpful in uh, stressful situations or in triggering situations would be to allow yourself to feel that emotion that's there. Because what you're doing here is repatterning your nervous system to learn that it's safe to feel these heavy emotions, these painful emotions. And we need to make friends with those feelings if we're ever going to actually move through them and learn how to process them in a healthy way. So that's really a, 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 a one step up from awareness is starting to actually notice when your boss yells at you and you're feeling scared right? You're feeling afraid you're going to lose your job or that he doesn't like you. And you're noticing that those fears come up. Can you spend five minutes and feel that fear? Can you allow yourself to let the tears flow? Can you allow yourself to, to really feel the heaviness of maybe that stress or that worry in your chest, right? And actually being with that, knowing that it will pass and knowing that you are safe to feel those things. So again, we're, we're repatterning like allowing ourselves to feel, we need to feel we're feeling beings and we spend our whole lives stuffing that down. So, you know, if you can even just do one minute right in those moments to allow the anger, to allow the, the fear, allow the sadness, like whatever it is that's present for you um, over time, you're going to start rebuilding that, that pathway. So as a sugar freedom expert, how do you actually work with women? What, what are you, what are you doing in, do, do you have consultations? What, what do you do? Yeah. Uh, thanks for asking that because it's, 
definitely changes every year, depending <laughs> on what I'm, what I'm flowing with and what yeah. I'm feeling inspired with. So currently um, I'm shifting away from the one-on-one -on -one model with clients because I'm really, really passionate about the healing that we can do as women in community. And I feel like with something that carries so much shame and guilt, like our eating habits and our, 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 our body dysmorphia and shame and, and trauma, there's so much that actually needs to be healed in community by being met in vulnerability and witnessed. So to be seen and heard in a group of other women is so incredibly potent. I can't even compare it to when I was doing one-on-one -on -one work. It is just not even on the same page. So that's really my pa my passion and the way that I work with my clients. I run a few uh, virtual group programs every year. One focused around uh, the Break Free from Sugar program uh, is focused around the detox and doing some of this underlying foundational inner work. And then I have another program that is really deeply focused more on the emotional component um, and the, the even deeper dive into healing those root causes of sugar addiction. That one's called the emotional empowerment program. And I have just recently gotten into in-person retreats. So this year I just hosted my very first retreat, which was absolutely life-changing. And it is just the start of many, many more of those. There's something magic that happens when we can come together in person, as I think we can all understand now after the last few years of how much we are craving being together and being able to be hugged and held and look into each other's eyes. And so that was really magical. Uh, so that's, that's another way that I work with my clients. And then I have a few, um, you know, DIY sort of self-paced things um, online that uh, for people who don't want to work, you know, in person directly with me can have access to those courses for, for low prices. And I just want to also put it out there that you also have a podcast. So if women are interested, but they're not quite sure, or they just want a little bit more information, I would highly suggest that you check out Danny's podcast. Was it Beyond Sugar? podcast? Yeah. Yes. Thanks for mentioning that you're actually coming on next week. I'm so excited about that. I'm excited to have you on. And it's the Beyond Sugar Freedom podcast. Um, and that is absolutely uh, the best place to start. If you're new to it and you want to know more about me, obviously we don't have time today to dive into all the nitty gritty pieces, but you'll get a really good sense of the conversations that the inner pieces that I'm really diving into, which is very, very unique and different in this sugar space. Um, and I'm, I'm really proud of that and really excited to help women create change from, a, from the inside out, from their foundation so that they never have to go on another diet again, or try another 30 day sugar detox again, and just get off of that roller coaster and create real actual lasting change. So the podcast is a great place to come and come and get to know me a bit more. But that's what the menopausal transition is all about. It's about creating version 2.0. It's about transitioning into a brighter, better, more fulfilling um, second stage of life so that we can live a long and healthy. It's not so much the long that excites me. It's the healthy. I'm after health span rather than lifespan. And working with these underlying emotions, we've actually transforming the way you view yourself the way that you view your previous relationships and your family and your friends and your work as you mentioned just to actually find out what what you're feeling what you're thinking and how you can create the life that you actually want yeah that's so beautiful and really ties so so wonderfully in because we didn't really talk about this today but beliefs such a huge thing all of our self-beliefs right um, especially as we age and we go through menopause, you know, the, the, the beliefs about, um, you know, I'm not worthy if I have gray hair, right. Or I'm no longer lovable because my breasts are sagging, right. Or like the wrinkles and just the, the inner world that we create as we age is it, this gets amplified. Right. And I know so many women, I don't know about you, but all my clients, they just want to feel at peace with themselves and food. Right. And, they just want to feel free in their bodies and we can have this at any age. So even coming against some of those limiting beliefs around, well, I'm just getting older. So my life is getting worse. Right. And I love what you're doing and what you're sharing. Right. That's not true. This is the next stage of our life that can actually be celebrated and actually be really beautiful because we can be more confident in who we are and really own ourselves and maybe do more. Maybe we have more financial freedom and we can do the things that we want to do and live the life that we want to live. So 
Um, I think that's really beautiful that you're helping women women do that and and do that at the core as well. You know, obviously not just band aid approaching the hot flashes and the the night sweats, right? And helping really make make lasting change. Well, it's been so wonderful to have you on the show today. Thank you for coming on, Danny. 